All righty. Hallelujah. Are you glad we're not alone? Uh, we have the presence of the Holy Spirit, but I want to talk to you. Can I talk to you a little bit about angels tonight? Uh, because I love angels, you know, and I love what the Bible says about them. But we're going to start in Psalms 91. And, uh, and, and I was just going to read uh, a couple verses out of it, but I love the psalm so much I'm just going to read the whole psalm. <laughs> and then we'll come back to two verses that we're going to set on. But in Psalm 91, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. I just want to stop because I'm not going to preach on that tonight. But I will say of the Lord, not I will think of the Lord. All through this Bible, from the beginning, it talks about that we need to get our words under control. So in the midst of the circumstances in our life, we can say, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. That's what I'm going to say. That's my confession. Amen. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow by, that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Uh, a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Amen. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot because he has set his love. Now here, now you're having the Lord talk back to you. Is that all right? Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's what God says about you. But we're really going to go back to a couple verses here where it says, uh, uh, and I'm going to read this in the Amplified, 11, 12. For he shall give his angels a special charge over you to accompany and defend and preserve you in all your ways of obedience and service. They shall bear you up on their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. Man, are we glad about that? I am so very glad that we have angels watching over us. Amen? And, uh, and, 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 and while I talk about this for a minute, uh, uh, it's going to take a little bit, but I'm going to try to fit this into time, you know, so we're not here all night. But he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, lest... Uh, they shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. As a matter of fact, angels are, are not for our imagination or entertainment. I know it's Christmas time, but there aren't any little old men who've been sent down here to save us down here. And yet when they get their wings, you'll get to hear bells. And one of my favorite movies is It's a Wonderful Life, but... But, but I'm just going to tell you, in, in, in the movie, that's what they do. But the truth about it is, is that the movies show a lot of things like that, don't they? Right. I remember I used to watch cartoons when I was a kid, and it shows some angel, uh, somebody would die, and all of a sudden they're an angel. <laughs> it's just no wonder that you go to funerals, they'll say, and you'll have somebody get up at a funeral and say, Oh, my father was a good man, but now he's an angel. And it's not the time for me to go tell him, Your dad's never going to be an angel. Angels are created beings. Now, the, the, one of the words used for angel actually means messenger. So there are some times when men are referred to as angels. But they're not the angelic host that we know in heaven, that one-third of the, that host was bashed to, to earth. There are, there's more, there are people that always today, they're looking for the supernatural. They want something that's beyond what they can see. And are there beings out there beside us? Yes. Are we alone in the universe? No. Are there extraterrestrial? 
I remember somebody asked me one time, said, there's such thing as UFOs? Yeah, there's unidentified flying objects. We don't know what they are. That's why they're called unidentified. I have spent no time thinking about it. The, the, the beings that we need to know about are these angelic beings that are on our side. Because one third of the host of heaven rebelled against God. And when they rebelled, they were cast to the earth with, with Lucifer, became Satan. And, uh, but that means for every angel that's a fallen angel, there are two heavenly angels watching out for us. From time to time, these beings have always appeared to man. When sometimes people say, uh, uh, well, so-and-so said they saw an angel. Well, the Bible said you may even under entertain angels unaware. There are angels helping us through our day. There are angels that come minister to us when we are, when we're down. When, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, when he got done with overcoming the enemy with the word of God, angels came to minister to him, the Son of God. Martin Luther, you know, the great reformer, he said this. He said, an angel is a spiritual creature without a body created by God for the service of, of Christendom and the church of Jesus Christ. Well, did you know that? We'll get that, that in a minute. But you know, the, the Bible actually says that, that angels are sent to minister to us. Now, do people misunderstand that? Yes. Debbie and I had a friend that periodically would go like this. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I dispatch angels. Well, I can't dispatch angels. I'm not their boss. The Bible says very clearly that they hearken unto the word of the Lord. And so I can't decide to send angels here or there. If I did, I'd, I'd done a whole lot during this election. There's a story, it came out of Billy Graham's book on angels, but I use it as an illustration. He tells of the thrilling story of the protective care of angels over John Patton and his family. It seems that a hostile nation of natives surrounded the mission headquarters of the Pattons one night with the intent of burning the Pattons out and killing them. And so John Patton and his dear wife and children huddled together and they prayed for God to deliver them through this danger. They awakened the next morning relieved to discover somehow unaccountably there would be attackers that left and so they thanked God for delivering them. But the rest of the story is this. A year later, Mr. Graham says, the chief of the tribe was converted to Jesus Christ. And Mr. Patton, remembering what had happened, asked the chief what had kept him from him and his men from burning the house down and killing them. And the chief replied in surprise, well, who were all those men you had with you there? The missionary answered, there were no men there, just my wife and I and our children. The chief argued, said he'd seen many men standing guard around their compound. <laughs> many men standing guard, hundreds and hundreds of big men in shining garments with drawn swords in their hands. And so they backed up. Well, that's not a fairy tale. That's our angels. You've heard the t story that I told that many years ago, early in my Christian walk, I had decided I was going to take my life, and I was down in uh, uh, Joplin. And, uh, and so my w I don't know if you know what it is to feel so grief and so down that you wander around aimlessly and don't really have a plan of going anywhere. And I was that way. I was in shock about something that had happened in my life. And so... Uh, I walked over to this, uh, 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 what, what's the name of that steakhouse on Range Line? Was it Golden Corral? Huh? Oh, it's a Shoney's guy. So I walked over to that Shoney's, and uh, I said, give me a cup of coffee. I'd been crying, but I wiped the tears from my face. I was just so down. I, I never had been that down before. And I, I walked in there and I, I grabbed a plate and went to the salad bar. And it's, they were, there was a ministerial convention going on in town. And I didn't know that. And uh, uh, one of the ministers said, one of the guys was up at the salad bar, Hey, how's it going, buddy? And I, and I, I didn't treat him right, but I told him, I said, Don't act like you care. Because I live in a world where nobody cares. So don't tell me about that. And so I put the salad on my plate, went back, didn't eat any of it, sat in my deal, and I was just... I was so down. 
And uh, then I decided I was going to leave. Before I left, I looked over there, and that guy was sitting there, and they were looking over at me, and they were kind of laughing and talking to each other, shaking their head. But nobody got up to find out, because nobody wants to approach somebody who is not doing well. They want to they wanna stick around people that are doing good. But Jesus came to rescue the perishing. So I got up and walked out of the restaurant, I got in my van, and I decided I'm just going to drive that van and run into something and kill myself. I don't want to kill anybody up. I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to be done with it. And uh, I started to start the van. All of a sudden, there was a man standing to my left and put his hand upon my arm. And he said, the Lord has heard every prayer, and he's seen your every tear. And he said, the Lord says he's going to fulfill the ministry he called you to. What people don't know is back then... I didn't know there was a ministry I was called to. And so he touched my arm, but there was just a peace that came over me. And then when I looked up, he was gone. Now, I've told that story to people before. And uh, they'll say, that was just somebody. No. I think when man wouldn't come and meet my need, I believe God sent an angel to bring a messenger to, to me. Bring a message. The heavens are full of a myriad of angels. They're, the Bible says the angels are innumerable, which means that man cannot count them. And that means that even though one-third of a demonic presence is down here on earth, that there are all around us a myriad of angels operating the heavenlies watching out for us. And while they're not normally seen, we know that they can be seen because at different occasions they were seen. And they still are to this day. The devil himself, the Bible says, he's a fallen angel and yet he can appear as an angel of light. Certainly if he can appear as whatever he wants to as an angel of light, then certainly the heavenly angels can appear as what they, whatever they need to do to minister to us. Amen? Elisha, the great prophet of God and his servant, uh, one day were facing a horde of soldiers coming from Syria and it looked like they were facing certain death. And the servant of Elisha was terrified. But Elisha then prayed and said, Oh God, open his eyes that he may see. And God allowed that man to see with spiritual eyes. And the servant observed row after row of chariots full of the hosts of heaven. Full of the angelic armies of God. Do you think things have changed? No. There's a myriad of angels all around us watching over us. And although they don't hearken to my word, they do hearken to the word of God. So I must fill my mouth with the word of God. And all the demonic hordes there are in this world, they are absolutely no match for God's angelic artillery. power of God is so real and he's on our side is anybody glad about that today Amen. now right now why is it you don't hear more about angels can I tell you why because Christians are more involved with demons than they are with angels they want to spend their time talking about demonic presences with, when really there's twice as many angelic angels that are working for the Lord and working on our, our behalf, but we want to talk about the demons. The demons are nothing. For every demon there are angels galore, innumerable. You can't count them. The angels are all around us and and when we study angels, the mission and the ministry of angels, we, we suddenly see God's great grace that even though we are messed up, but because we belong to Him, He assigns those angels to watch over us. We start looking at what God has done and how He watches over us, and we read Psalms 91, and suddenly we learn more of His holiness, His grace, His power. We experience God in a greater way. We start realizing that we are not alone. We're not alone. We need more Christians that will say things like this. Say, devil, you don't want to mess with me. I, you are greatly outnumbered. Amen. 
these heavenly beings exist and they provide unseen aid on our behalf. And, and, uh, and, 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 and I don't believe in angels because somebody may have written a book about it. I don't believe in angels because somebody has made a movie about it. I believe in angels because the Bible says so. But we have become a, we have become a Christian people who are more leaning upon their experience than they are upon the Word. So if they haven't seen an angel, it's easier for them to say angels don't exist. They really negate the power of God when they do that rather than realize that they are sent. They're ministering spirits sent to the very elect. Amen? We were in this little church right here and, uh, and there, were, there are different visitations that we've had. There was a time here when people saw angels on the, on the, uh, 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 positioned all the way around. A mighty move of the Holy Ghost and, and our eyes were open. If, if, the, if the servant could open his eyes, have his eyes opened, when the prophet prayed to open his eyes, maybe we ought to pray God open our eyes again to see that there's more in this world than what we see in the natural realm. They come to strengthen and they come to help and they come to protect and, and the world declares that angels, the word of God declares that angels exist. Now I don't have to see a movie to know that. I know it because the word says, now I did have an experience with an angel. I mean God can show you whatever you want to. I'll never forget the time that I was preaching right behind this pulpit and I'd walked out and I was right in front like I've done many times. And I'm in the front and this old lady who was visiting the church that day she said, that was amazing. My whole life I wanted to have a vision, uh, 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 be able to see Jesus. And Jesus was standing behind you. I said, what? She goes, Jesus was standing behind you. And did you know every time you raised your hand, he raised his hand? And every time you said something, he said something. And I said, ma'am, I so appreciate you telling me that, but I think that's backwards. Because I believe every time Christ raised his hand, I raised mine. Because he's the one who leads, guides, and directs. But if we have our minds fixed only on the natural things, then we get in trouble in life and, and we'll think that the only thing that God can do is send somebody to preach to us rather than recognize that he's already taken care of the problem and we have an angelic host on our side. They are, they are real, angels are. They possess intelligence, superior intelligence to us. They possess a personality. And I don't believe that all angels are alike. You say one, there's one different than another because uh, they had different names in the Bible from each other. They have their own personality and, and do they experience emotion, but did you know they don't understand salvation? The Bible says they don't understand that. Job 38 says that the angels rejoiced in creation. They're, they're immortal, and, 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 and there's no indication in Scripture that angels ever die. They don't, they don't procreate. There's, they don't reproduce. We're not going to someday we, uh, have too many angels. They don't reproduce. Whatever God created at the first, He created the first, and He doesn't continue to create angels. He created an innumerable number to begin with. A third of them rebelled and he cast them down to this earth and they're walking around here as demons and the devil himself can't be in more than one place at a time so he sends his demons out to do, their work, do his work. Hebrews 12, 22 speaks of an innumerable company of angels and they're organized like an army with ranks and officers who march at the command of God, who execute righteous judgment uh, of God. I want to remind you that, the, that uh, uh, it was when, when the prophet prayed for the servant to see him, he was seeing an army. An army. Not little wimpy beings who were saying, well, I hope everything goes all right. They're an army of angels. Had their swords drawn and they were inside of the and they were in they were inside of their chariots. I want to tell you something. They're warring angels. 
They're messengers to men in, in, in human history. Angels were present in the Garden of Eden when, man, uh, 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 when, when mankind fell and God stationed angels to protect the garden. Angels were present, according to Acts 7.38, when the Ten Commandments were given, when Moses received the law of God, the Pentateuch, and the, the Decalogue of God. Angels attended there and ordained that moment with God. The prophets were ordained of God, according to Acts 7.53. And so in the revelation of Scripture, in the giving of the Scripture by the Holy Spirit, the angels ministered there. Angels are real and they haven't changed and they're here. An angel was present in the dream of Joseph to protect the Christ child. Angels were present in the life of Jesus when he faced Satan and, and, uh, and they ministered to him. And then when our Lord faced the cross and there on his face pouring out his life's blood for us, he sweated blood and tears. The angels came there in the garden, according to the scriptures, and ministered to the Son of God. I don't know why this touches me, just to talk about it. When Jesus said, before he went to that cross, I can call legions of angels to, to save me if I wanted to. I can see the legions of angels standing there. My Lord, my Lord, release me. They didn't understand salvation, do you remember? But they knew who the Son of God was. They knew who Jesus was. And so they were standing there with swords drawn, and Jesus meant it. If I release them, if I release them they're going to rescue me, and they'll take you out. But Jesus decided to go to the cross instead and pay for it. And of course the angels were there that morning when the ladies went to the tomb expecting to anoint his body and the angel sitting on the stone rolled away and said, Why are you seeking the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. Angels. The angels were there after 40 days of appearances of the resurrected Christ when Christ ascended up to glory. And there the angel of God said, Ye men of Galilee. And he spoke to them. Don't tell me that angels can't appear to man, speak to man, protect man, guard man, and at the end of our days, it is an angel who will deliver me into the hands of my Lord and Savior when this body gives up. They promised the return of Jesus when Jesus ascended on high. They said, they'll participate in my return when I come in glory to the holy angels. Revelation 7, 2 and 3 and Revelation 16 uh, uh, in the book of Revelation, you see angels in the last days. And angels will be involved there as executors of God's plan and the purpose for mankind. And they'll show power over all the elements and power over the environment as they do God's will. And do angels work behind the scenes of the drama world history? We see them as worshipers. We see them as warriors. We see them as preachers and as communicators. But they're doing the ministry of God. They're doing it for God. And they care about you. And they care about me. It's Hebrews 1.14 that says, Are they not all ministering spirits, speaking of angels, sent forth to minister to those who will inherit salvation? That's you and me. They're on my side. What do they do? Number one, they watch. They watch us. And the Bible says, uh, and while you're making your way, uh, it, it says, for I think that God has displayed us, the, the apostles last as men condemned to death, for we have been made a spectacle to the world, both to the angels and to men. They're watching what's going on. They know what's happening. Don't think that they don't, they don't understand salvation because they don't get salvation. But they understand what's going on in this world. They observe our actions. They understand we have purpose. They understand God has a role for us to play here. And they watch us. You know that angels go to church with us. Right now you're thinking, well, I wish we hadn't fought on the way to church tonight. In Ephesians 3.10, I think it says, To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God may be known by the church 
to the principalities and powers in heavenly places. The principalities and powers uh, are, are, are the angels who observe and watch the wisdom of God displayed in his children. And there's angels here this evening, right now, in our midst. Don't believe for a second that they're not here. My angel that watches over me all the time, who I'm quite sure gets frustrated, is watching me right now. And your angels are watching you and Guardian angels that have been set to watch over this church are watching the church. And they're watching over us right now. Amen. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. Yes. There's glory on its face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Angels are present in and we're promised the Spirit of God and they stand amazed at the wisdom and the love of God and the angels wonder at our worship because angels have never been saved and angels have never been redeemed as we've been redeemed. And so yet they see who God is and they can't so say anything to our Lord and our Savior, anything else but holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth must be filled with His glory. So they watch with amazement and give glory to God. And then angels guide us. Not only are they watching us, they're guiding us. Angels are, are, are guiding us. They are guiding you sometimes when you don't know they're guiding you. John Calvin said, The angels are the dispensers, the administrators of the divine blessing toward us. They regard our safety, undertake our defense, direct our ways, and exercise a constant Solicitude that no evil shall befall us. The angel guide us in the experiences of this life from time to time. I love it. Then there will be a time of death. I know that if I am not raptured before my time of death, Jesus spoke of a poor beggar and that poor beggar sat outside the gate and asked for alms and then he died. And the scripture says immediately, our Lord said immediately he was carried into the presence of God. He was carried. I love it. And so someday when my heart quits beating, I'll be carried by the angels of God into the presence of my Lord and my Savior. Every time a saint of God dies, a child of God passes through to the other side, there's presence of angels to attend to us, turning the tragedy of death into a triumph of hope and eternal life. No wonder the scripture says, precious, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And that angels protect us. I love it. Now remember, angels are powerful, powerful, mighty beings. Don't get the idea that angels are some kind of neutered male. Not true. They're strong. They're powerful. Powerful weapon in the hand of God. They minister to us in, in times of distress. In Acts 27, uh, Paul, along with 200 others, were on a ship that was thrown in the midst of a great st storm. And while the rest of them were frightened and despairing of their life, Paul stood on deck and said, cheer, cheer up, fellas. Last night an angel of the God who I am and of whom I serve beside me and said, don't be afraid. You're going to be delivered and you're going to preach again. What if we were to open ourselves up more to that? Get out of just the natural realm and get understand what's happening in the spiritual realm? Angels delivered him. Angels delivered Daniel in the lion's den. They stopped the mouths of the lions. Are there guardian angels? Yeah. He shall give his angels charge over us. Matthew 18.10, it says, Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that, that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. I want to read that in the message. What that you don't, watch that you don't treat a single one of these childlike believers arrogantly. You realize, don't you, that their personal angels are constantly in touch with my Father in heaven. There they are. 
my personal angel, when, some, when the enemy's attacking, I mean, that personal angel, you know, he, he's there to defend. And he's going to the Father. And he's saying, listen, you see what's going on here, don't you? I know he has preserved my life. I'll tell you a story about my son, Bobby. My Bob, Bobby had a motorcycle accident on the, the road that goes to Bait City. Kirby Road there, you know. And the people that were there, remember he came up and didn't tear nothing. Didn't hurt himself. And the people watching it said it was really weird. Never seen an accident like that because he went down and it looked like he just glided in air and then sat down. And I remember thinking, I don't think that weirds me out too bad. I think I know who did that. <laughs> that angel, his guardian angel was saying, you know, you're constantly pushing the limits here, you know what I'm saying? We should be like the angels. We're not angels. We should be like the angels in that our desire should be to worship our God and our Father continually. We ought to be like the angels in the fact that we should serve Him obediently. We ought to be like the angels in that we witness for Him personally. We should be like the angels in that we minister to others individually. We could strengthen the saints like the angels. We could comfort the bereaved. We can attend those at illness and death. The Bible tells us there's a way to start a party in heaven. I spoke about this not long ago again. I want to start a party up in heaven. But I can be like the, the angels. I can bring a message. I can bring the message that even angels don't understand. How Jesus went to the cross. And paid for our sins. Man, we have a host of heaven watching over us. We are not alone. We can go about and do what God's called us to do. Can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet. Receive that from the pastor tonight. Hallelujah. 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 When I preach something that I really, there's certain things that just touch me. When I think about what's happening in the spirit realm, right now, I know beyond a doubt, there are people that inside this room that have prayed for things or wonder if it's going to happen. And yet right now, God is doing things in the heavenlies that you don't even understand, setting things in order. Amen. It was like it was paving the way for her to let go. Yes. That started on Saturday, went into Sunday, Mother's Day itself. Monday, then Tuesday, she got up, and I, you know what she did? She put on her Heart of God shirt. <laughs> she fought long and hard to get exactly the right size to go Dean and Nut. So she could change it so many times. So she had to have that, she never put that shirt on unless she was going somewhere. We had no plans to go anywhere, no appointments. She went downstairs because I had a hot tub and I had one of our, our babies. Was, I had him down there playing in the hot tub and I was talking to her. We were visiting back and forth about, I knew, visiting back and forth. I got, I'm coming to it, I promise. She had to have a drink. She went upstairs and I knew when she went upstairs that I would not see her on this earth again. But the thing that was so beautiful, and I've always known what happened, 
I could see it in my mind's eye just as sure if I was there. When she got to the top of the stairs, she didn't fall. She was curled up on her side with his hands under her head, way off to the side where she wouldn't block the door. She'd been laid down gently, and I have no doubt, I see in my mind's eye, I see an angel on each side of her taking her by the arm and saying, come on, RJ, let's go. Amen. And they lay her down just as gently. Do I believe in angels? Heavens, yes. Absolutely, yes. Hallelujah. I love that testimony. That's awesome. Awesome. Let's just lift our hands. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I'm not alone. I have the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and a host of angels that cannot even be numbered watching over me. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. If anybody wants to make another offering towards that couch and stuff, bring it forward.